everyone, welcome back to another episode of upintheair.stream and in this episode I'm just going to show you a couple different modifications that we've done and, and things as we have it set up in the Airstream. Um, you know, it, it's a work in progress always and so things are always changing and evolving. Um, trailer's slightly messy today, I mean not bad at all, but this is more like an actual like lived in type look, you know. So starting over here. Uh, we have our Berkey. Um, if you don't know what that is, definitely look that up. The Berkey is uh, a really nice way to purify the camp water and make it some really good drinking water. Uh, very economical. You can do like 4,000 gallons of water through one set of filters. Uh, we take it into the house when we're not using it in the camper. So definitely look that up and look at all the videos that you'll see. Uh, I think uh, a definite must uh, is a ice maker when you're on the road to make your mixed drinks. We had some Bloody Marys this morning. Um, we keep it on top of the stove. We actually do use the stove when we just made some breakfast burritos. So we just simply just take the ice maker and just sit it over here on the table while we're, while we're cooking breakfast. So a little bit of an inconvenience, but not bad at all. Um, but yeah, you can find those on Amazon. Uh, there's no affiliate links. We don't have an Amazon affiliate program whatsoever. So moving on around, our spices there, just a variety of spices. We used to have some fancy spice holders, but that just got to be a hassle, always change them. Uh, one of the things that we did do is we, we like uh, saltwater fish quite a bit, and uh, obviously we love Florida, so we did some uh, different fish around the cabin. So I'll just kind of show you those as we go around, some fake plants. Uh, we keep our MiFi located there, plugged into the USB charger. And just as a reminder, uh, the model that we have here is the 2022 Ford Bunk Twin Globetrotter model and uh, 23 foot, in case I didn't say that already. So these are the Bettys, the Betty Lennon. And um, I think, you know, it, obviously it needs to be tightened up a little bit if you were really worried about the aesthetics of it. But man, these things are awesome. They got zippers, so they're sort of like sleeping bags. So you got your fitted sheet and everything else. Um, if you hadn't heard of them, you know, I, I don't want to make this video too long, so just kind of go in there and uh, do your own research with the Bettys. We did put the Froley sleeping system underneath. Uh, Chrissy's out there on the phone. And uh, so we got a big manatee here on the wall. Um, I did put the ring smoke detector. Uh, so we have two smoke detectors in here. It's also a carbon monoxide detector, and I like having that backup plan and not trusting the um, propane detector. Actually, there is no, typically no carbon monoxide detectors in a uh, factory uh, uh, RV. So, highly recommend that. That's, you know, I'm a retired firefighter, so believe me, they do come in handy. Hopefully not, but you know, just as your added protection. Um, all right, so moving on here. It's pretty all pretty standard affair. Um, you know, cabinets are hard to organize. Um, we we did we do use these uh, felt like dividers in here, and things are kind of thrown in here. For those of you that own a globe trotter, not do this at your own risk because there is a speaker there. But they they actually waste a lot of space at the factory by having a panel right where you see this dog food at. Um, you know, none of that would be in there, the dog food or nothing because normally there's a panel that just closes off that area. And I do understand why they do it, because they don't want things banging up against your speaker or whatnot. But uh, yeah, I'll take my chances for that extra storage space, so. But these felt dividers, we got these are Aldi's. They're really nice. I think you've probably seen those in a previous video. Let's, um, let's uh, talk about this. And this is actually probably gonna be one of the main title screens or mentions is uh, the radio here. And this is a WT, 3800 NEX, it may be slightly different model than that, but that it's a 3800, it's a nine inch touch screen. And uh, really, really love, it has worked out great. Wireless CarPlay. Um, these 2022s will come with the Fusion system and it comes with a sub amp, um, a subwoofer that is, a JL Audio subwoofer, and then the speakers are, are okay. But with this, I mean, it does, it's, it's great. I mean, it sounds like a good sound system in here. I wish I could play it so you could hear it, but unfortunately I'm recording on my phone and I was actually feeding it from that. So um, 
all you have to do basically is uh, take out your fusion and then this is a chassis system and I'm not even gonna be able to show you which is a good thing right because then it, it looks just that much more factory and I reappropriated the USB plug there my microphone so I can I can tell you know what SIR I to do its thing and, and uh, you know play the next song or whatever uh, up there I have an Amazon cube and let's talk about that for a second and you know the, what, why why was I motivated to change out this fusion um, radio and, and replace it with this pioneer radio touchscreen because um, the other one was touchscreen as well well first off it, it just really would not connect very good and it, it was problematic the menus were absolutely terrible uh, with this I'll get my notifications also I could be sitting out in our zip D folding chairs and I can use my uh, Apple Watch to change the next song. So if I don't like what song is on, I can do that as well. So it's just, you know, the Apple hierarchy and you probably wonder, you know, well, why aren't you using an Apple TV along with that? Um, we've kind of moved on from the Apple TV as much as we love Apple stuff. We did go to the Amazon and one of the reasons to replace the Fusion is because even though these were, the Fusion system was being installed in a 2022 um, it still had Bluetooth 3.0. Uh, this has like Bluetooth 5.1 or 5.2. Um, the reason why that's a big deal is because the Amazon uh, will talk to your via Bluetooth will act, you know, allow your uh, speaker system within the trailer to be a theater system by using the Bluetooth. So it will connect. However. The Fusion would do the same thing, but there was a huge delay, and you can correct that. There is a setting within the Amazon Cube, the Fire Cube TV, to kind of make that better. But the biggest reason why there was such a delay is because Fusion 3 or Bluetooth 3.0 is super slow compared to 5.1, 5.2, whatever it is. Um, so you know, I forget all the technical de details sometimes as far as technology, but um, just realize that. The Bluetooth capability of this new head unit makes a lot of things possible and then wireless CarPlay which some of you are familiar with that because you have it in your vehicle um, and this is a vehicle media center so all the menus are going to be very familiar to you as well um, so that there is a familiarity there you can also use your phone more familiar everything else more familiar than that fusion system so I understand why they don't put something like this in here uh, standard because it is pricey, but I do wonder how much they're paying for the fusion systems and what the price difference and what you're paying for this trailer if they could just do that. Um, there's a Makita. We, I'm going to do an episode on the, the Makita tools that I use because it's pretty extensive, but we do have a Makita charger that we put up there. And then a lot of you know, like this doesn't come this way. I just use a piece of Kydex um, with double sided tape and attached it here so I can get in there and get to the wires when I want to or even store things in there if I want to. So that's, I recommend, like if you want to put things uh, without screwing uh, screws in there and making it more inconvenient for you to get in there, just use some industrial double, uh, not double sided tape, I meant to say industrial Velcro that is, um, so that you can just pull that panel off or pull panels off to get back to things as long as, you know, it'll hold it. All right, so, Kind of talked about that for a while. Uh, that's all good stuff. The um, got a turtle up here. You may, you're probably like, okay, yeah, we really don't care that much about it. But you know, crab. Um, let me show you here in the restroom, in the bathroom. That is, um, we do keep a a uh, dehumidifier out all the time, running all the time, even though you know the windows are open. But at night or when times when it's buttoned up. Um, it will pull the moisture uh, out of the air and keep things from getting stale. A uh, nice big sailfish there. Um, yeah, pretty standard affair. Uh, we do use these microfiber uh, towels throughout the uh, trailer. I recommend just you know getting a whole set of them and uh, just really investing in some good towels because that is uh, key on the road. And that will keep you from running through paper towels like so quickly. So let me show you one other addition out here uh, that we have put recently. Get back, Oz. Sorry about the camera work. Um, so coming out here, as you can see, we got our Zip D chairs deployed. 
out here. And then over here is our latest addition, which is the Ninja Woodfire Smoker. And uh, man, this thing is awesome. Uh, you know, definitely don't take my word for it. Look for other YouTube videos. I'm, you know, this isn't a Ninja Woodfire Grill episode. There's plenty of those out there. Uh, but I did want to share that with you. And really like the purpose of all of this is just kind of showing you how we do things and so that maybe it gives you some ideas uh, of what you might want to do with your setup. We're here at Camp Margaritaville in Pigeon Forge and it is beautiful. We got a lot of rain yesterday, but uh, today it's sunny and uh, with the possibility of rain and then hopefully tomorrow is better as well. But this is our setup and I'll kind of pan around here slowly so you don't get dizzy and uh, show you the campground here. There is going to be a dedicated video, if I haven't said that already, for our second year review of this campground because it's it's relatively new. It's less than five years. It's been around. I think this is maybe its third year, uh, maybe not even that long. So I'll just scroll around here slowly. Um, they still can't. I'll talk about this in the main review. They still can't figure out how to grow grass, uh, but. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, I'm always critical of the grass thing, but uh, yeah, and I was too last year. So yeah, we have everything deployed out here and uh, we're having a good time. This is site 10, as you can see there in the, uh, on the sign there and the Smoky Mountains in the background. So, all right, well, this is gonna be a 12 minute video and uh, appreciate everybody watching. Make sure to subscribe to see more videos in the future and more modifications and appreciate it. Take care, be safe.